Our story is one of reimagining. Reimagining who you can be, what you can achieve, and how SEMA can support you. As technology and digital platforms disrupt businesses, we are reimagining what the profession can be. We've updated our syllabus to meet the expectation of employers, ensuring SEMA qualified professionals have the skills to make an impact from day one. Reimagine your career. Contact SEMA Sri Lanka. Welcome to LMD TV. This week on Talking Business, Anushim Sarvaraja speaks with the Executive Director and CEO of SEMA Sri Lanka, Mahesh Vijayvardhana. Welcome to the show, Mahesh. Good to have you with us. Oh, thanks, Anushan. It's a pleasure to be here. What is the state of play when it comes to the retail and consumer goods sector? Uh, well, um, talking about retail, uh, if our uh, general retail is very wide sector we are talking about, honestly, the, the impact wasn't as bad as we thought. So the... Uh, the the retail sector of the consumer durable industry was able to come back to some kind of a normalcy quite faster than other sectors, I would say. Uh, that is uh, mainly a reflection of, uh, of this consumer durable sector where these goods are seen now as more essentials for their day-to-day -day living than luxuries. So that is why it is reflected that the people uh, require these goods. They need these goods in their day-to-day -day living. So what happened was that the um, although we had a lockdown situation, uh, there was a pent-up demand which brought in the, uh, the sales in the subsequent months. So that made the consumer durable sector to make a, a kind of a recovery faster than we thought. So then what are the emerging trends that you see? Uh, well, well, something that we noticed is that the people's uh, needs and the priorities of the needs change during this period. So you would uh, realize that, that those are now converting into as emerging trends. If you take the situation of working from home, kids learning online, and also a lot of people trying to digitally transact, made a new uh, dimension into the, uh, the consumer durable sector, especially in the digital side. So increasing the demand for those items like mobile phones, tablets, computers, computers like essential. Now, every house where children are there, you need a laptop to, for them to start their lessons. Then the, the other trend we are looking at is seeing is uh, when people are at home, uh, they started the uh, uh, actually, they were restricted of going out for various things like personal grooming, even for their res visiting restaurants, uh, eating out. So all those led some of the consumer durables like kitchen appliances to go up because the children started cooking, the mothers, fathers, all of them started trying out various recipes. So that actually brought in another uh, trend of uh, making meals at home. Uh, one other trend is people are seeking information now, listening to news. So uh, things like televisions also are uh, sources where they are watching more at home. So the TV is also uh, a trend where we see uh, people are opting for bigger TVs than what they used to have. 24s are becoming 32 and 32 becoming 40, 43. So these are some of the trends. And one more thing is the online people getting used to buying online because they are restricted of going into retail outlets, traveling. So they started uh, trying out various, uh, I mean, say digitally transacting through e-commerce. So those are three or four new trends that we see, which will, I think, will um, end up as some kind of a uh, ongoing trends, not to full extent, but to some extent. Mahesh, with all these new uh, uh, ways of buying and selling, uh, what has been the impact on the top and bottom lines? Um, well, Anushan, the, uh, I'm unable to uh, give you precise details of because the numbers are not yet released uh, to stock exchange. But overall, I would say uh, uh, there has been a decent first half, actually uh, meeting or above prior year level of revenues. The you know, month of April was basically nothing because it was a total lockdown situation. So 
so we lose a big month like april is a seasonal month so you lose that but from may onwards middle of may onwards showroom started opening so the retailers came into the scene so since then till about end of september things were okay until this recent situation uh, so the retail segment uh, i think performed well in the first half and some of the uh, interim action that companies took in order to uh, improve their efficiencies uh, cut their wastage improve their cost efficiency especially uh, so that has actually given them a, a, a much better uh, bottom line improvement situation what is your take on the import ban then import restrictions actually came in as a short term measure by the government to uh, support the reserves position and to reduce the dollar outflow uh, obviously as business people we don't like to see anything restricted in terms of what we sell now uh, since it's a national need of course we couldn't do much but the only thing is um, uh as far as the consumer durable sector is concerned uh, our import restrictions were there for about 3 months and with our lobbying and uh, able to convince the government that these these goods are needed for day to day living uh, we were able to lift some most of these import restrictions uh, by providing supplier credit so that there is no immediate um, uh impact or immediate pressure on the dollar outflow so we were able to get 90 to 180 days of credit in the long run if the government's um uh, thinking is to promote more locally produced goods so then it has cannot be just done through immediate restrictions because the companies need time for preparation so that means at least one to one and a half years of time needed to set up these investments so uh, what i would say is that restrictions should not be a, a measure for that it should uh, the life has to the, the business has to go on until we get more ready with a, a proper import uh, local manufacturing setup we're we'll going for a short break now we'll be right back after this Welcome back to the show as we continue our discussion with the executive director and CEO of Singha Sri Lanka Mahesh Vijayawardena. But Mahesh the the country wants to attract high spending tourists uh, at least once the country opens up again. Uh, but these high spending tourists they are used to a certain uh, uh, type of a certain amount of luxury. Uh, they want the high end products. How would the import ban affect those high end tourists? It's it's a serious situation. It's a serious situation. uh because sri lanka had a long term plan since 2011 if i remember right to make colombo a, a shopping hub a, a retail hub so in that basis only some of the duties were reduced uh, some of the items are allowed to import so that sri lanka could be equally or uh, in par with cities like dubai hong kong singapore kuala lumpur or bangkok where the prices our uh, products are available same products are available at almost the same pricing so that is a tourism idea and also you know uh, that colombo is developing very fast with lot of uh, shopping malls and mixed development pro- projects so 3 3.5 ha- million if i remember right 3.5 million uh, square feet of malls are getting developed so how do you fill this up you can't fill this up with local goods nobody wants to shop only for sri lankan products so you must have that global outlook in our country so that is where import restrictions are not going to work now earlier you made a point about that uh, local companies need time to set up investments to manufacture locally uh, but mahesh it's been a number of years now since the country opened up and our basket of products 
products that we can export has been quite empty. What do you make of this? Yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, because we uh, lost focus some time back and uh, and two or three things. I think the first thing is that government uh, uh, coming into power never came up with a consistent policy to support this. It varies from one to the other. So the no investor was able to put their money into a real production facility, knowing that it's going to change in three years or five years or 10 years. Your investments are big money we are talking about. So if we know that there is a surely a, a, a consistent policy, at least for 10 to 15 years, there's definitely the companies will go and put money and invest on those. That's one. The second one is the, the economies of scale. Now, these, some of these items cannot be economically manufactured for a small market like Sri Lanka. And a small, uh, not only a market, but also if you look at the consumer segment we are talking about, is could be small. So when you can get it, uh, when you have to fight with pricing from large company, countries like China, India, Turkey, uh, maybe even US, where there is very high efficiency in manufacturing, you will not find it in Sri Lanka with this level of uh, uh, the quantity that you are talking about. The scale of uh, economies of scale will come into play there. Then the, the other thing is the competitiveness of these products also has to be taken into account because if you are um, uh, like protection with some of these duties and taxes, if you are allowing, that will also come in as a, I would say, as a cost to the, uh, cost to the consumer. Because they can easily access these products from overseas. Because they are traveling, they can import. So few things like the policy framework is the key thing. And also the support extended by some of the authorities to push these local industries to come forward. And the, uh, our ability to change with the global trends. Moving on to another track then, Mahesh, what is your take on the work from home concept? Uh, well, uh, I would say that um, these are situations where uh, the new trends compelled us to think differently and act. Right? So, working from home, maybe uh, uh, one year ago, we didn't, would have not much spoken about. But now we are talking about it quite a lot. So I would say, um, as personally, I'm not a firm believer that everybody can adapt to this. Because the company's model or the business has to be designed in a way that it has to be uh, flexible for that people to work from home, part of them to work from home. Uh, so a company that have been existing company running on a different model, suddenly to adapt is not easy. But maybe a percentage, maybe 10% of your people, 15, 20% can work like that. But certain uh, companies, uh, de depending on the nature of the company, more people will be able to work. Do you think that employees are taking advantage of this? When you want to do this thing, when you have to uh, go on the working from home, the, the employees must have that uh, like ownership of working from home, that attitude. Those things have to be there. So somebody honestly say, talking, you someone can take advantage, right? Saying I'm at home, I'm only 15% half uh, 50% working. So there is no monitoring mechanism as such. So it can't be like a policing thing. But that, that uh, personal attitude, personal uh, commitment has to be there. But it's also a, a situation where you do have an able, you do have a situation of uh, reducing overheads. If you really plan it well. Now, if you are to replicate a company uh, where he was an office-based guy, office based employee and suddenly we ask him to work from home means you are based sometimes uh, maybe ex incurring an additional cost also because his office is still here he's uh, we are providing him with extra data extra equipment to work from home as well 
so certain company that could be an additional cost as well but in the long run when you design certain company design certain let's say even a department of yours you still can now think of this working from home concept as a final question then mahesh what is your outlook for the retail and consumer goods sector so when you look at future uh, this sector has still have a lot of potential unfortunately for the last 12 to 18 months we have had like back to back uh, 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 adverse situations which impacted the uh, the businesses the country even globally so they didn't never got a chance to take off like one after the other we had issues but what happens is if you take, if i take, uh, talk of our sector our sector is a facilitator for people to improve their living standards right so what happens every day people will aspire to live better right so the person who used firewood for cooking will want to use a gas cooker next person who used a, um, a normal pot for cooking rice will need a rice cooker person who you didn't use a refrigerator will need a refrigerator so these products the need for these products will continue to remain and the other thing is um, they also the penetration level of these items sector items are not very uh, much penetrated or very high in sri lanka certain uh, like for example televisions are penetrated into about 90s but 90% plus but refrigerator is about 60% washing machines are 30% air conditioners only less than 5% uh, kitchen appliances may be 20 30 40% so uh, penetration levels are not very high and also the the it has come to some of them are into replacement level for so people who use the crt tvs are now replacing with panel tvs people who use 32 inch tvs are now after 5 6 years are now moving to 45 inch what is 40 inch tvs so there is faster replacement these products are now replaced much faster than before as you know this equipment upgrades are happening and uh, and also the needs continue to evolve there are new needs are evolving which some people may not thought of having before now people will want uh, equipment to support them because of the busy work life of the husband and wife both working most places kids are busy so there are new needs coming in so therefore i would say going forward the outlook for sector in the short term as well as in the long term is very good well that was quite interesting thank you very much mahesh for joining us on the show it was a great pleasure okay thank you anush and thanks for the opportunity given after a short break ashwini vedakan will take you through a round up of local news stay tuned Welcome back to the show. I'm Ashni Vedakan and here's a roundup of local news. As of earlier this week, the number of COVID-19 patients stood at 8,413, with the recovered number being 4,043. On Saturday, a record of 8,066 PCR tests were carried out across the country, while on Sunday, 57,221 individuals had left for their homes having completed the mandatory period at quarantine centers. Earlier this week, the country witnessed a spike in its COVID-19 death rate, with the number of fatalities reaching 19. Meanwhile, two internationally acclaimed hotel chains in Sri Lanka have suspended operations indefinitely. Several hotels in Colombo have postponed their events indefinitely following the surge in COVID-19 cases in the country and the subsequent curfew in some areas. As of Monday this week, all trains on the Putlam and Kerani Valley lines have been cancelled, except for those special trains carrying GCE A-level students. And in other news, the rebound in Sri Lankan equities seen last week was short-lived, as panic selling returned to markets this week. 
Amid the growing number of COVID-19 cases, while the government reimposed curfews in highly affected areas to slow the second wave. Consequently, the Bourse ended the week on a negative note as the All Share Price Index fell by 176.85 points, or 2.97%, to close at 5,768.94 points, while the S&P SL20 Index also dipped by 72.55 points, or 3.06%, to close at 2,297.88 points. On a more positive note, the local agri and processed food sector has been offered a platform to showcase itself in India with the launch of the Sri Lanka Agri Products and Processed Food Promotion Program in Mumbai. The project falls under the implementation program of the export economic policy set out by the President. As demand for processed food has been observed to be growing substantially due to the increasing urban middle class in India, Sri Lankan exporters were urged to tap into the prevailing opportunities. That's all we have for you this week. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.